Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It is Wednesday, January 20th, 2021. This is your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaken Analytics. You can find me on Twitter at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaken Analytics. Head over to chakenanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email where I get a lot of the content for this show. We also give you daily stock ideas to consider, and that hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities were higher in Tuesday's trading, ending just off the best levels of the day. Energy, comm services, and tech led the charge. REITs and staples lagged the broader tape. Treasuries were unchanged, roughly. The dollar was stronger against the yen, weaker on the euro cross. Gold finished up 60 basis points. WTI crude settled higher by 1.1%. As we get to the desk this morning, uh, futures are adding on. S&P futures up 40 basis points after Asian equities were mostly higher overnight, Hong Kong extending its recent outperformance. European markets are posting solid gains. Treasuries are unchanged to slightly weaker. Dollar is stronger against the euro, weaker against the yen. Gold down 10 basis points, WTI crude higher by 90 basis points to kick us off on uh, Wednesday, Inauguration Day here in the United States. And uh, we continue to think that a balanced approach is the best strategy. It's something we've been writing about in a lot of our notes to clients uh, really for the past couple of years. It's been easy to just kind of be long the growth theme. Uh, it's been easy to be long large cap over small, right? Uh, but now that's changed. It's broadening out. Uh, and a balanced approach is what I think makes the most sense at this stage of the game. Uh, and you can see it here with all the major averages working higher, you know, in a day where small caps lagged a bit, uh, the Q stepped up, right? And we, we've kind of seen this back and forth for the past few weeks. And we've been writing about that, uh, talking about having a balanced approach. The key levels uh, unchanged here in the near term. SPY still support 360, then 340 is important. As long as we're above 340, you're playing for 413. It's that simple. Q's 260 is key. 300 is still important in the near term. So far, though, <clears throat> we've done a fair amount of good work holding above uh, that level. IWM, near term support 190, then 160 to 170, the key level to watch uh, to keep the uptrends intact uh, across these markets uh, for kind of the intermediate to longer term time frame. The trend is up until proven otherwise, and that remains the case. I know the calls out there, it's frothy, it's a bubble. Stocks are expensive. The trend is up, folks, uh, and, and that continues to be the case. And until the trend is not up, uh, I think maintaining a bullish stance uh, is the best bet. You could have made those frothy, expensive arguments at any time in the past six months, and you would have been wrong. Uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, continuing with our views on the market and just looking for opportunities under the surface. Let's hit our market in a minute. What are we writing about today in the note? Well, stocks move higher, led by growth and energy. Uh, I think that rare earth metals uh, are a nice play on clean tech, right? Everybody kind of focuses in on the obvious things like solar and, and wind, but uh, understanding what that supply chain looks like it, to enable that technology, I think can uncover some opportunities. Copper miners are oversold leadership, right? Both of these also kind of play into the inflation theme that I have had going since the summer. Uh, the sentiment song remains the same. We'll talk about what that means when we look at that chart, but it's going to be ridiculously familiar to anybody who's been watching this show uh, for the past few weeks slash months. And as I said, futures point to a higher open here today. Let's take a look now uh, at what's happening. Uh, the Dow up 40 basis points, six to four bulls to bears there. A lot of green on the screen, which is encouraging when you are bullish as we are. S&P 500 up 78 bips, 135 to 57. NAS, your outperformer, as I said, uh, up 1.5%, 26 to 16, bulls to bears. Small caps, lag the NAS, outperform the S&P. Up 1.3, 838 to 112, bulls bears. Bonds uptick, yields lower. Energy, your best sector, up 2% yesterday uh, as that group uh, rebounded after some weakness uh, late in the week. Uh, last week, but uh, up 2%, two to nothing, bulls to bears in the energy complex. Jake and Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks are still strongly bullish. Let's hit our stock of the day, taking a look at Take Two Interactive. Uh, for those of you who uh, read the note that I wrote on Sunday, we highlighted Activision. Today, we're going to highlight Take Two, TTWO. Take Two is a bullish stock, closed up 1.25% yesterday at 198.73. Strong trend above this rising long-term trend line. 
with stock breakout now checking back to that breakout slash trend line as part of a strong industry group. Reading the chart now from the bottom up, you can see the ribbon at the bottom of the screen tells us where we are and have been over the past 12 months. And we are on that bullish rating. We're outperforming. And in the near term, we have become oversold, right? So oversold within the context of an uptrend on a market leading stock. Those are the setups that I look for. Uh, add in the confirming data point of bullish money flow. And all of a sudden, take two presents a compelling opportunity in my mind. <clears throat> If you are looking for opportunities uh, within that space, take a look at Take Two. TTWO uh, is the name that we're highlighting on the show today. And we are also highlighting in our note to clients. Sector tracker, movement of the major sectors over the last five days. Uh, that kind of counter trend rally in REITs and utilities keeps them towards the top of the list. Comms, healthcare, and energy and tech are also higher over the past five days of trading. Tech, I mean, in fairness, let's just call it flat. And we've, we've talked a lot about tech and what's going on there. Uh, discretionary fins, staples, industrials, and materials are lower. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know, some back and forth. A lot of the key themes that we've been focused on uh, remain key themes in our mind. You know, back and forth day to day, we'll get some backing and filling. I still think materials make sense. I still think industrials make sense. Uh, we'd love seeing staples as an underperformer. Fins. Obviously, in the heart of earnings season, the big banks kind of checked up a bit. Even Goldman pulled back yesterday. Um, I think the bar has just been raised for the financials, in particular, the banks and, and some of the big brokers. Uh, we'll hear from Morgan Stanley this morning and see how that one plays out. Uh, speaking of our industry and focus is regional bank services. Now, remember last week, we highlighted the big banks, KBE, and said that they were overbought heading into earnings season. Well, let's take a look at the regional banks, KRE outperformer over the past six months, leading the S&P by 38%. So being there has been the right move. Power bar ratio, which looks at future potential, is very strong. 91 to nothing, bulls to bears. It's the highest ranked uh, group of the 21 subsectors that we track. You want to take a look at some names as potential ideas. QCR Holdings, QCRH is very bullish. Independent Bank Corp, IBCP is very bullish. And UMB Financial is also very bullish in all three our holdings of an ETF that looks um, on the verge of a breakout or breaking out and holding there, a bit of a consolidation. Remember, we're just overbought here in the near term. Uh, similar to KBE last week, we're very bullish, strong trend above that trend line, solidly bullish money flow, outperforming since November uh, and just overbought here in the near term, quite frankly. So as we're moving into earnings season for the banks, uh, you know, we talk about the bar being raised. Add to that the fact that these stocks have had nice runs and they're overbought heading into their prints. So we want to dice, slice and dice the prints, uh, see which names look compelling, see which names hold up, and then potentially add, have them on a list. And when they become oversold, they potentially become uh, interesting opportunities on the long side of the portfolio. That's how I see it. And that's how I'm going to talk about it. Let's take a look at what's trending now. Yesterday's S&P 500 movers and shakers are gainers and losers. General Motors, very bullish stock, up 9.75% on news of a partnership with Microsoft. CarMax, KMX, up uh, nearly 9.5%, did catch an upgrade yesterday. Etsy, Etsy up 8.26% yesterday. I didn't see anything company-specific news. There was some commentary about Pinterest being better positioned uh, than names like Etsy. So, you know, who knows, right? But uh, stock higher by eight and a quarter percent yesterday. Live Nation um, uh, took a stake in a streaming platform, and that was enough to offset a downgrade. Uh, Live Nation higher by nearly seven percent yesterday. Skyworks uh, moves to the plus side by six percent. Didn't see anything company specific to drive trading in that name. Uh, Xerox is a very bullish stock, but it caught a downgrade yesterday. Uh, stock uh, lower by 6.2%. National Oil Well Varco, negative pre-announcement, uh, takes nearly 6% out of that stock. Um, well Point provided an update. Investors did not like what they heard there. Uh, stock was lower by 5% on the day. Fox A, didn't see anything company specific uh, to take 4.7% out of that stock. Viacom did catch a downgrade. Uh, down 3.42% on the day. So now we are going to see a lot of, um, we're, back, we're into the micro, 
right? I know there's a lot going on from a macro level. We're talking about vaccines. We're, we're watching the, the, the kind of the high frequency data. There's the inauguration today. Um, we heard president elects Biden's um, relief plan last week, right? So the macro is still important, but we are in micro season now, micro season being earnings season. So uh, a lot of moving parts, a lot of interesting updates and opportunities to kind of get a sense of what's the story. Um, speaking of the story, new week, same story as it relates to sentiment, uh, the CBOE equity put call ratio. I mean, I, I'm just I'm, I'm to the point where I almost want to throw it out, but as soon as I throw it out, I know it's going to become meaningful. So I'm not going to do that. And the reason I'm, and I'm, and I'm joking, but you know, we've been in an excessive greed stance since May, in the May, June timeframe. Um, you know, normally when you see everybody leaning one way, uh, that's counter, that's a counter trend indicator, but just hasn't played out. Um, you know, We've been in this excess greed position for quite some time, and we remain there. Those are the facts. I'm not going to argue with them. That's what is. And it's interesting because it plays out at the same time, as I've said repeatedly over the past few weeks, plays out as the VIX remains stubbornly above 20, right? Not getting back down to those levels that we saw in 17 and through most of, through a lot of 19. Um, so obviously, a lot of moving parts, a lot going on under the surface. Uh, but you know, sentiment continues to look the same as it has. Now, if we look at something like the CNN Fear and Greed Index, it did back off a little bit this week, down to 61 from 69 the prior week, uh, but still in a, in, a, in a greed position. So um, the sentiment picture is largely remaining the same. I looked at um, COT data on you know, S&P 500 index products and not a real tell there. Uh, slightly long bias to speculators, but nothing that really uh, jumps off the page as being contrarian in nature. So very much the song remaining the same, uh, you know, not for me to decide. Uh, that's just what's playing out in the marketplace. Now let's talk a little bit, um, a little bit more thematically. Now we all know uh, that, that, you know, green, green energy, clean tech uh, has been a hot theme, right? Especially uh, with the administration changing. Uh, we, you can look at things like solar, you know, tan, the ETF there, you can look at fan, the wind ETF, I clean, you have the battery ETFs like BATT and lit LIT. Um, I think a lot of that is well understood. What's interesting to me um, is, you know, when you kind of drill down to the next level, and you think about the supply chain that goes into enabling that technology, uh, I think rare earths is interesting. And, you know, you can take a look at something like the Vanek vectors, rare earth strategic metals ETF, uh, just a nice solid uptrend above the rising 50 and 200 day moving averages. Maybe we can say we're overbought or near overbought levels here in the near term, uh, but certainly bullish momentum uh, to go with that price trend. Take a look at the scooter at the bottom of the chart there, a 99.3 rating. So, you know, a solid out performer. What's also interesting to me here is we've, we've talked a lot in our notes and in, in our calls with clients uh, about, you know, opportunities outside the U.S. And, and improving global growth. And if you look at something like REMX from a geographic exposure perspective, 46% China. Um, so that's kind of an interesting dynamic as well. Uh, if you believe in this kind of emergence of better economic growth globally, uh, with China being a benefit of that, this is a kind of an interesting way to look at it. Uh, you know, more kind of traditionally, the copper miners also make a ton of sense in and around a similar theme, COPX, very bullish ETF rating here at Chaikin Analytics, above the 50, above the 200 day, again, solid bullish momentum, 98.1 scooter score shows the outperformance uh, that's playing out there. But just kind of thinking with, with equity markets overbought as they are looking for some opportunities, uh, in, in different pockets of the market. Uh, so kind of interesting uh, to see these areas continuing to do well, potentially setting up opportunities. Uh, so those are two, uh, two things that I'm highlighting in a couple of notes today to clients. So that is going to wrap us up on a Wednesday. Take us for a test drive. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash test drive to sign up for a free 14-day trial. You can get that note uh, that I reference here on this show and get a lot of my bigger picture thoughts. Be well, be safe. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. 
I will be back with you tomorrow. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.